Torah TV. The world is thinking. Throughout history, uh, social crises have tended to be explained through the idea of decadence. You know, when society reaches a tipping point or enters a crisis period or falls apart, there has been a historical tendency to interpret the problem through the prism of excess and opulence. It's become a kind of default and quite unsatisfactory explanation for historical crises. You know, right from biblical times through to today, there has been this idea of society being corrupted by excessive greed. So, for example, you know, one of the most popular images from the crisis and collapse and demise of Rome is of Nero playing the fiddle and drinking wine during the Great Fire. Uh, you know, one of the best-known legends of the collapse of feudalism is of Marie Antoinette of France saying, let them eat cake. You know, that quote uh, might not be accurate, but the idea of society being propelled towards a state of collapse by the greed of its rulers is a recurring one and, and a very powerful one. Excessive greed becomes both a symbol of and an explanation for a social crisis. The idea of a lack of restraint, a lack of control, becomes an explanation for why society itself is spinning out of control and entering a period of turmoil. The problem, of course, is that this default explanation is far too partial and narrowly uh, moralistic. And it can even serve as a distraction from understanding the larger social and economic forces that bring about crisis and social collapse. And yet today, people are putting forward very similar default explanations for the economic, social and moral malaise afflicting the society that, that we live in. You know, according to the title of one new book, we live in an age of greed. Uh, the modern day uh, Sodom and Gomorrah is now seen as the kind of the square mile in the city of London. You know, society has been wrecked, we're told, by the excessive greed and decadence of bankers in particular. And, you know, over the past year, we've been treated to detailed stories about how much these people spend on booze, how many times they visit lap dancing clubs, what they eat for lunch and dinner and everything else, you know, in a very kind of Caligulan way. And the idea of, of decadence causing social collapse has returned with a vengeance. And, uh, of course, it remains as partial and unsatisfactory an explanation as ever. However, if we, were, if we were just witnessing the return of the kind of slightly narrow decadence argument, that would be pretty bad. But, but it's, there's something worse than that. There is something new and unusual and darker in today's focus on greed as the destroyer of society. What is different today is that it's not only the rich and the rulers and the fat and the, you know, the opulent whose greed is said to have caused turmoil. Instead, all of us, every single one of us, is implicated in the age of greed. It's not just the modern-day Marie Antoinette who have apparently ruined everything. Instead, we're all apparently complicit in the destruction of society through our lack of restraint and our uh, uh, lack of control. I think this is unusual and, and also uh, deeply disturbing. So today, everyone from Fred Goodwin to Chinese peasants is complicit. So alongside attacks on Fred Goodwin's bonus, you will also read article after article telling us that the fact that Chinese people eat more meat is bringing about an historic food crisis. You know, alongside denunciations of bankers' fast cars and champagne lifestyle, you'll also hear denunciations of the fact that more Chinese and Indian people are buying refrigerators, which will apparently, you know, contribute to global warming and bring about the end of days. Alongside attacks on bankers for making money from thin air, you'll also see attacks on low-income families who took out mortgages even though they couldn't really afford them. You know, uh, how dare these poor people buy their homes? Uh, you know, who do they think they are? How dare Chinese people eat meat? You know, let them eat rice. That is the kind of miserablest slogan of today. And what we end up with as a result of this new, I think, spreading of the decadence argument to everyone is a demand for restraint amongst all sections of uh, the population, a demand for restraint as a solution to society's problems. And, uh, but even here, I think, even in this demand for restraint, there is something new and distinctive going on. Because today, uh, we're told to rein ourselves in, not in the name of redemption or as a way of improving our moral and intellectual selves, but simply in order to stop being so destructive. 
You know, today there is a real palpable disconnect between any discussion of human behavior and any idea of human uh, redemption. Because in history, movements that encouraged aesthetic living or simple living, they always tended to be linked to some philosophical worldview, some idea of making human beings better by testing them and developing them and building their character. You know, for the Puritans and the Victorians and others, hardship had something to do with redemption, something to do with redeeming human beings. But, but now the, the calls for cutting back are not linked to any positive human objective. It's not about character building. It's about completely external numerical things like reducing how many toxins you produce and how large your carbon footprint is. It's not about developing the human. It's about punishing the human in the name of some external force, usually Gaia or some other nonsense entity. 